the immune system, as many people are aware of, is, um, is like a good police force that is out there to keep your body and your community safe. So it's always watching out for and taking care of bad actors, and by that I mean infection and even cancer. So if you have viruses that are affecting your body, bacteria that are affecting your body, it's your immune system that fights off these bad actors and then makes your body healthy again. So that's what a healthy immune system does. But sometimes the immune system turns against its own self. Instead of just watching out and taking out the bad actors, it's actually coming out and damaging or destroying its own self. So that is the meaning of the term autoimmunity. So when I think about rheumatoid arthritis, I think about a chronic, which means lifelong arthritis, which means involving the joints, um, and autoimmune arthritis, which means it's the immune system which is causing damage and destruction to the joints. However, rheumatoid arthritis is much more than the joints only because it can involve other parts of your body as well, such as skin, uh, lungs, eyes, etc. So when a patient has rheumatoid arthritis, particularly if it's untreated, uh, they have ongoing inflammation in the body. When you think about chronic ongoing inflammation, I almost think about chronic smoldering fire. You have to put it out because if you don't, it's gonna cause damage and destruction. So what the patient experiences is not only pain, stiffness, and swelling that is directed in their joints, these symptoms include fatigue. Fatigue is a very common uh, presentation of patients with uh, autoimmune diseases. So they may feel unusually tired, not able to do things that they would want to do on a typical day. As I've just mentioned, it can involve their eyes. Patients can have dryness of their eyes and their mouth. Uh, patients can experience symptoms of, in their lungs. Um, they can have a chronic cough. They can have shortness of breath because the inflammation can affect their lungs as well. Some patients can present with a condition known as Raynaud's phenomena. Raynaud's phenomena is when your fingers and even toes can turn white or they are very affected by the cold weather. And then they can have involvement of their skin as well. So sometimes patients can develop ulcers that are also related to rheumatoid arthritis. They can also have involvement of their nerves so a patient may come to my uh, clinic and say, Dr. Huck, I'm experiencing numbness and tingling in my feet. I wonder why. And that itself can be also related to damage to the nerves in the hands and feet, again, because of rheumatoid arthritis. So as a rheumatologist, when I'm seeing a patient with rheumatoid arthritis, I'm of course focusing on their joints, but then I'm focusing on other organs and I'm making sure that I pay attention to what else rheumatoid arthritis is affecting in that particular patient. Many people think that in rheumatology we take care of old age diseases. Um, that's actually not the case. Uh, many patients with autoimmune diseases are affected in their 20s and their 30s. But if you look at the peak age when rheumatoid arthritis is diagnosed, it's typically in a patient who's in their 40s or their 50s. That does not mean that patients in their 70s and 80s um, cannot be diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. So we can diagnose this disease any time of a patient's life. Two decades ago, when a patient was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, I think the biggest concern that the patient and the treating rheumatologist had was how do I control this disease so that uh, the patient can avoid being in a wheelchair in the next decade or two. Well, the wonderful news about medical advancement in treatment of rheumatoid arthritis is that we have such effective therapies for rheumatoid arthritis that we have been able to have a big impact on chronic disability and that patient, you know, in terms of their risk of ending up in a wheelchair, it's really at this point, we have minimized it to the point that it is rather not existent. However, for that, of course, the key is uh, effective treatment and good follow-up with your rheumatologist.
While we have made a big impact on uh, treatment and um, avoiding disability in our patients, there are still some things that we as rheumatologists want to keep a very close eye on and monitor in our patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And I think the key for me is their risk of heart disease and strokes. We know that patients with rheumatoid arthritis are at twice the risk of having a heart attack or a stroke compared to a patient who does not have rheumatoid arthritis. So I'm always thinking about, in this 40-year-old patient with rheumatoid arthritis, how do I minimize that risk? And that basically means we want to make sure their blood pressure is well controlled, their diabetes is well controlled, cholesterol is well managed, the patients are exercising, they're eating a good diet, and keeping an ideal weight. The other concern that I always have for my patients with rheumatoid arthritis who are on these very powerful medications for rheumatoid arthritis uh, is that I want to make sure that I am closely monitoring them for any medication toxicity and side effects. As I said, while we have miraculous medications, uh, they need to be taken under supervision of a rheumatologist, of a physician, who has expertise in managing patients on these medications. So I think that's the other thing. We want to make sure that over the lifespan of our patients, uh, that we manage them and monitor them very closely for any side effects of these medications.